The defense wishes to assert its right to summation examination, my lord. Objection. We're on a schedule. <laughs> Objection! London is the capital city of the most powerful nations of Earth. We have a duty to the world to exemplify the very highest standards of the judicial procedure. Submission examinations are an embarrassment to us should remain buried. But if it's alright, it's alright. I believe it could prove vital in this trial. Clack, clack. The defense's petition is perfectly valid. The court will proceed with a summation examination. Summation examination! This is madness. This is Sparta. Don't say it. <laughs> no! <laughs> Too late! Guess that me! Four men, <laughs> are you and the remainder of the jury ready? Eh? Well, um, I'm not, um... There was no mention of this in the letter I received, you see, so... All members of the jury will be asked to explain on what grounds they have reached the decision. On what grounds? You must all justify your decisions and explain why you believe the defendant to be guilty. Well, my lord, you're rather putting us on the spot. This is most... <clears throat> this is most irregular. No mention was made of this before. I really... I don't really hold with all this justifying luck. It's probably because everybody here wants him dead. They seem to have thrown the jurors off. <laughs> it, seems, it seems none of them have experienced this before. Alright then, the summation examination. A defense procedure no practicing lawyer has attempted for years, is it? Well, just maybe. It might be the opportunity we've been looking for to turn this trial around. Uh, roll credits. So be it then. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the court hereby calls upon you to state the grounds on which you find the defendant, Magnus McGillard, guilty of this most serious crime. <laughs> hey there, confectioner. Welcome. We're doing our best. <laughs> Hey girl, hey, how you doing? Do better! It's impossible! <laughs> this is this some friend of yours? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she is. There's no one else inside the carriage at the time, so it has to have been him. <clears throat> oh, I well, trust the driver. Welcome, Grassy Hobo. Oh, <laughs> hello! <laughs> that's, that's my brother. I trust the driver. He has an excellent memory, it seems. Four passengers with fares totaling 20 pence. You stuck the chap right next to him like this. Brazen, I must say. Absolutely brazen. Well, I've simply typed and collated all the statements made thus far and drawn the logical conclusion. It's nice to meet you, Grassy Hobo. Welcome. <laughs> you can... You could trust the guild. Fair fares is our motto. We haven't raised price above four pence for years. <clears throat> the scoundrel stabbing the man on the that poor man on the floor. It beggars belief. Well, th thank you, thank you guys for stopping in. That's great <laughs> to see you. I'm starting to wish I hadn't pushed for this now. Oh, and thank you for the follow. 15 out of 15. <clears throat> Some of the jurists don't seem to have a wonderfully formed arguments, though, do they? I don't know. Oh, yeah, it, it popped up in the bottom. <laughs> Let's see what we can do. We need to get these six people to change their minds. I have to throw everything I can at them and use some very persuasive language. Very persuasive language. <clears throat> Just a moment, Mr. Naruhodo. Oh, thank you for the follow, too. I appreciate it. According to my book, that's not quite how it works. Oh? I thought I was going to have to thaw the icy minds of some heartwarming rhetoric about the defendant. Unfortunately. Once the jurors have decided the defendant is guilty, they're unlikely to heed anything the defense says. But, but then... 
They've reached a conclusion by their own reasonings, you see. Their pleas will sound like excuses. In fact, it could recoil on you. The more you try to persuade them, the more entrenched they may become. Then what on earth am I supposed to do? Oh dear. I'm just citing what I've read about the British law, Mr. Naruto. Right, I'm sorry. Do you have any idea how to make this work, then? Well, from what I can understand... The key to this procedure is using the juror's own words to make your arguments. What do you mean? Well, the six members of the jury are randomly selected members of the public. <laughs> uh, they may appear to present a unified front, but the truth is... They are complete strangers who just happen to find themselves in the courtroom together. And that's the way to break them down, you mean? Yes, exactly. We must listen very carefully to what each member of the jury says. And see if we can identify any contradictory statements. If we can, we can then contrast the statements and pit the corresponding jurors against each other. I see. So it's contradictions in what two or more jurors say that we're looking for. In a way, then, this is similar to regular cross-examination. Oh, yes, I, I suppose you're right. Find contradictions in their statements and pit the jurors against one another to break them down. All right, I may be able to pull this off. No, that's not right. Slap, slap. I have to pull this off. Can we start proceedings, Counsel? I would ask you to take the stand for this. I'm expecting a clear and concise rebuttal. Yes, my lord. Oh, this is new. It's a jury examination. Jury examination. So we can press any statements or we, and we can pit. Oh, so it's like the same thing now? Yeah, but pitting you take... One person's statement, and you pit it against somebody else's per statement if they contradict each other. Okay. And pre um, pressing can yield new stuff sometimes. I guess we might as well press then, right? There's, okay. Press it for me, baby. Certainly. The testimonies we've heard suggest that the victim and Mr. McGilded were alone inside the carriage. Precisely my point. But could there be some other explanation? Something we haven't considered yet? Such as? <laughs> well, um, perhaps that's something we could, um, all work out together now. Yikes. Now listen here, maybe you don't know how things work around here because you're from foreign climes. But we're here to form our opinions as individuals, and I have. Ugh. Oh dear. He doesn't appear to be in the mood to consider any alternative point of view, does he? No, I'm going to have to pit the jurors against one another. Like Suzetta san said. Finding contradictions in these six people's assertions is the only way I'm going to succeed. Should we, get, should we just press them all or? Uh, I don't know. Like, it seems like like they're not going to add anything, at least in this one, from the sounds. They might, they might not. So, uh, it's up to you. Um, I'll try pitting. That'll oh. be interesting. So oh. what? what I don't know. I want to press this guy at least. He's, he's fun. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> sure. Careful, you you could actually you could hurt somebody with that. Tis you're a fine one to talk. What is that sword hanging from your waist, hmm? No no, that's just my battered soul. Well anyway, I despise anyone with too much money. They're all the same. All stabbing some brickmaker or other behind the scenes, you mark my words. That seems very unlikely, doesn't it? Are you mad, man? We know that small shorty is a rotten Shylock. Well, yes, that does seem to be the case, but... Mr. Nanagoto, please, be careful with what you say. If he's been trying to squeeze money out of us less fortunate, then as far as I'm concerned... He's as guilty as sin. The man can hang... Come to think of it, didn't one of the other jurors have something to say about the defendant's underhanded activities? You've thought of something, Mr. Naruto. Don't let it go. Test your theory. The two jurors' the statements seem to be contradictory against each other. Time of the present is why to pit them. Okay. 
Who did you want to pit against, Dave? Well, I guess that one, we got to pit against something else. <laughs> I was going to read, try to read them all to try to, like, see if I can figure it out. Um, stuck a chat next to him, like, does brazen? I'm going to say absolutely brazen. Okay, so next. Trust the driver, and that doesn't matter. Simply typed and collate all the statements. No, that doesn't matter. I can, you can trust the guild. That doesn't matter. There we go. That one. These? Yeah. Objection. These two statements are completely contradictory. What? Explain, Council. Post taste. Post taste. <laughs> oh, dearie me. I was only knitting a jumper for my other half. What is all this claptrap? What does contradictory even mean, I tell you? I ask you. We've heard from more than one witness that they all allegedly saw the actual moment when the defendant stabbed the victim. Now out of curiosity, Joe number three. What? Can't you see I'm busy here? How would you say the defendant stabbed the victim? What sort of motion was it? Ha! Huh. Want me to test? Want to test me, do you? It was like this. Stuck the fellow right next to him without even getting up. Just like the prim banker said. <laughs> Stabs the, the lady typing. Yeah, so was Mr. Fairplay's testimony. Quite true. Now then, juror number six. Oh, is that me, is it? What can I do for you, young man? How would you say the defendant stabbed the victim, madam? Oh, well, dear, as far as I understand it. <laughs> it was like this. He stabbed the poor man after he collapsed on the floor. The coachman said so. Now don't move. Take a look at the two jurors. He stuck the fellow next to him without even getting up. And he stabbed the poor man after he'd collapsed on the floor. But I never. They're, they're stabbing in totally different directions. What? <laughs> Bless my stitches. What a model. <laughs> what this tells us is that there's a strong possibility one of the witnesses isn't telling the truth. Oh. But why? Why the dickens would they lie? I don't know that yet. What I do know is that if the trial ends at this point, we may never find out. We may ne never know the real truth. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, can you really let that happen in all good conscience? Lies, you say? Oh, dearie me. I can't abide people telling lies. <laughs> the, the scales! I don't believe it. A witness lying ace turn again with a true shot. Wait! Now hear this, my fellow jurors, I warn you, you cannot listen to this man. Look at him in his black suit. He's, he's clearly some devious eastern sorcerer using magic on us all. Yikes. If I could use magic, do you think I'd be putting myself through all this? Answer me this, Dark Jinx. Huh? <laughs> that's, me? That's my favorite League of Legends skin, Dark Jinx. <laughs> What, exa what exactly is the problem? What if two of the witnesses have slightly different recollections of events? What of it? Let's say the Shylock did stab the victim as he was sat next to him on the omnibus, and this young daddy saw him do it. And now let's say the victim collapsed on the floor, and then the Shylock stabbed him again, and this old lady saw him do it. Well, what's to say it didn't happen like that, hmm? Who are you calling a dandy, sir? Why, I should take this knife to you! Who are you calling old? Why, I should take this needle to you. Ugh, they're ready to kill each other now. But could the foreman of the jury be right? Did the two witnesses see two different moments of the same crime? Did they? It, it's out of the question. If I remember correctly from the autopsy report, he was only stabbed once. I mean, you can see the autopsy report. It says stabbed, stabbed once. once. See? I got good memory. You do got good memory. Don't, worry, don't you mind me? Don't you mind me? I mind you. <laughs> Unfortunately, Mr. Foreman. Hmm? What is it, you dark jinx? Come on, out with it. <laughs> what you're suggesting is impossible. It's out of the question. 
What are you talking about, man? How could you possibly say that? You you do realize that I'm I'm only doing my job. As it's foreman like, uh, of the jury, I have a responsibility to steer everyone in the right direction. It's like um, what's her thing? Uh, what's her name? Mo Moira Brave from the movie Brave. I forget her name. Who Brave? The, the Merida. The, 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 Mer I, I said Merida? Moira. It's like some some Scottish name. Merida Brave. Merida. Just, Merida. Yeah. Merida. It's Merida. Merida. Yeah. M e r i t a. Merida. Yeah. She stabbed him through the heart twice in the exact same spot. She's so talented. So where's our evidence, man? That's what we want to see. I say the two witnesses saw two different moments of the same crime. If you say that's out of the question, show me some proof. Show me the proof. Looks As like the say, only way I'm going to convince him is to present him with something he can't dismiss. The proof is in the pudding. Okay, have a great name, Quill, and thanks for stopping by. Thank you, Conan. I really appreciate the confidence and the approval. Some irrefutable hard evidence, as you wish. What? And <laughs> I'll give you the proof. It's out of the question that two witnesses saw two different moments of the same crime, as proven by... The autopsy report. The armband. The, uh, the armband. It's like um, it's Attorney uh, X uh, Jackbox games. <laughs> The armband! This is the victim's autopsy report. According to what's written here, Mr. Mason was stabbed in the abdomen. Only once. Eh? Well, only once? Only once. It's quite simple. The victim was stabbed precisely one time. Which means his witnesses can't possibly have seen it happen two different times. Oh god, yeah! Alright, I can see the de defeat. Oh, I didn't think he would be so willing to uh, change his mind. Oh, well done, Mr. Narukado, you did it! <laughs> if we can manage to change two more jurors' minds, we can force trial to continue. Two more, actually. There's someone, something else that's been bothering me for a couple of their assertions. Then you... That's where you must strike next. So we need to pit two more jurors against each other and show there's another contradiction in their assertions. Exactly. You can do it. Well, the scales of justice have shifted, but they still weigh heavy on the side of guilt. Council, you have the floor again. Continue with the summation examination. No lover, the rich bear despise liars even more. Innocent is my call, at least for now at least. Okay, now what? What have we done? Inheritance? Oh, so sorry. I was I was speaking this entire time, but I have push to talk. So oh. I, I was so excited that I forgot to push to talk. Um, go back to the first one. First one? No, very, very first one. First one. There was no, there was no one else inside the carriage at the time. How can we know that? Okay, keep going. This was fun. I uh, trust the driver. He has excellent memory. Four passengers, with the fares totaling twenty pence. Okay, sure, that's done. Simply typed and collated all the same names as far as. It... Can you push that? Uh, we can press. That's the wrong shoulder button. Maybe she's gonna give us more information. Um. What have you been doing all this time? What have you been doing all this time? There. I should have thought it was obvious. I am recording everything that takes place as part of these proceedings. And what have you learned from that? For example, at this moment in time, the judge has used his gavel 11 times in total. Has he really? The prosecutor has snorted derisively at your remarks 7 times total. And, I might add, each time, you have got like a simpleton. Thank you. And what's the point exactly? So anyway, madam, are you able to explain why you think the defendant is guilty? That is a conclusion I've drawn as a result of the copious notes I have typed. Clearly, but I'm asking you to explain why you've drawn that conclusion. 
Please don't distract me. It makes it extremely hard to concentrate on my note keeping. This is going nowhere. They should just throw her case out. So you can trust the guild fair trades are out. We haven't raised price of a duh, it's that one. What this one? Yeah, you can pit that one against twenty pence total. Why? Because four times four is, is not 20. twenty. It's four twenty four in the nineteenth century. Twenty sixteen it, it's a base what base would that be? Base eight? <laughs> It's 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 base it's base sixteen. You just count in sixteens. Your two statements clearly contradict each other. Do explain yourself, Council. <clears throat> Me? Oh dear! What have I said? I swear on Silver Blaze's maiden name. I had the first faintest idea of what you're talking about. It's a real fun mechanic, I gotta say. According to the group test we've heard so far. There were four passengers in the omnibus in the night in question. And according to the coachman, Mr. Beppo, he took 20, pence, 20 pence in fares. I miss Mr. Beppo. Yeah, too bad he's dead. Quite right. <laughs> too bad he's dead. Quite right. I have this precise details and type neatly here in front of me. And juror number five also told us the following. The fare from the omnibus is always four pence. That it is, a fair convenient single price, just the way London's carriages should be operated. But that doesn't add up at all. In fact, it leaves a glaring discrepancy in the facts. Why, man, why? Four passengers paying four pence each. If you do the multiplication... Ah! It would be sixteen pence! Exactly. As I said, it doesn't add up. The figures are different. By four pence, by four pence, in fact, or precisely one person's fare. One person's fare. One person's fare. Yes, in one wor other words, in the omnibus that night, it's distinctly possible that there was another ma passenger we've heard nothing about. Good gracious! This this can't be right. The coachmen of the guild are good, honest men, one and all. Trustworthiness is our watchword. Figures your cosmic clays most certainly do not adapt. Your watchword's concerned is a fallacy. I beg your pardon? Mr. Guildmaster, I think you ought to consider that if this trial were to end now, the news would surely spread all over London. The news that one of your coachmen tried to hide the fact that he lets nefarious characters ride his omnibus. Mm -hmm. Alright then, how do I make it so this miserable trial doesn't end, hmm? <laughs> well, according to my book here, whatcha? you simply launch a ball of fire until the innocent side to set the scales. Now hold your horses, though, coachman. We're Don't all in agreement. To to? Why do you have to go out? At... Wait, wait till I get my hands on you, Beppo. Wait till I get my hands on you, Beppo. Beppo, look at the Beppo. Beppo. I love Beppo. Beppo is in trouble. Beppo's my favorite character in this series. All right, this is all very irritating. I'm begging your pardon, sir. I'm going to do the same. Fruity, Fruity Peppa. <laughs> part of a balanced meal. Get it balanced? Pr part of a balanced, balanced bap fist. Like, like the scales? Balanced? For the love of Mike. Not you as well. <laughs> I... Penny can be the difference between a smile and a tear, after all. I'm certain... I certainly can't put my trust in anyone who doesn't follow my exacting standards in financial matters. You're Mike, Shady. <laughs> Mike Wazowski. Really? Mike Wazowski. I, for one, <clears throat> think it's only proper that we hear from the witnesses again. Wait, that... that means... Four jurors and Eileen is not guilty. We've done it, Mr. Naruhodo. We've won! I, I love her little fist bump. We've won! It's, it's just the cutest tiny little fist bump. <laughs> Don't you forget What are you playing at, you dandy fool? Shut your trap, sir. No one deceives me. But we had a consensus. I said shut your trap! 
I know a liar when I see one, and if the chap ever dares to cross the threshold of my shop, I'll take this razor sharp blade and shave every last hair off his head. Yikes. <laughs> Juror number three, you're being a little excessive. Please tell me he's a barber. Like, I, like, I would think that he's the killer, but, like, he's too extreme, you know? Like, he's definitely just... Well, in a quite remarkable turn of events. The thing is, I was looking up to, like, when I was, like, trying to divide up characters, I was looking up the jurors, like, pictures to remember who the jurors are in each case. And the wiki has a little, like, a little subtitle for each one. Like, juror number one is listed as is a uh, banker and juror number two is maid juror number three lists his barber so maybe he is a barber maybe what a quite remarkable turn of events i wouldn't lick my shaving razors but you're not a barber <laughs> Although, <laughs> as you know both of us have a lot of oh my phone died so i can't see the chat anymore sorry guys the defense summation examination flipped the balance of the scales of justice the jurors can talk about me in chat, and I'm not gonna know. The jurors now stand at two for guilty and four for not guilty. Yeah, so I hope we get through the first section of this case tonight, but I don't know. I don't remember how long it is, and or I was gonna say this case end. that long. <laughs> it's three sections long, like the previous two cases. Accordingly, there is no longer a large enough majority among the juror for me to advocate, and the trial must continue. Listen, I'm having a blast. Like it's okay if we take a little bit longer for my, for my sake, at least. I'm enjoying it. I hereby ask the defense, prosecution, and witness to ret return to the places. And I, call, and I call upon all of you to, con to continue to, to continue to pursue the truth. I should just voice him like the Charlie Brown teacher. Wah, 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 wah. Wah, 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 wah. Wah, 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 wah. So, Lord Renzix, continue to substantiate the case for the prosecution, if you please. Wah, 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 wah. Okay, so this is the voice that I would have given him have I not done Breathy Vampire. <clears throat> if he says anything. <laughs> he, he's, he's smelling the wine. Any day now. <laughs> Come on, please, say something. <laughs> <laughs> if he doesn't say anything, I'm going to be so upset. <laughs> okay, ready? Having savored the rich aroma of the carmine context of this hallowed chalice. No, I think like your other one's better. I know. I'm just saying. I, I mean, that was the voice that I was like workshopping. In in my playthrough, in my playthrough, what I've been doing is having savored the rich aroma of the carmine contents of this hollowed chalice. That would have been real good. Like you should have been voicing Van Six this entire time. That, I feel but like then I'd be voicing him I and Rianske. I would have done Rianske. It would have been flip the script. That's fine. That's we fine. would have had to decide that way in advance. Yeah, but I didn't know about Van Six. <clears throat> I may, <clears throat> I may seem crass to crush it to dust. Pray forgive the discourtesy. Lord Von Zix. Your hello chalice. <sighs> is it cold in, cold in here or is it just me? Does he have multiple hollow chalices or is that the last one? <clears throat> as, you, <clears throat> as your antiquated tome no doubt says, the prosecution may not speak during summation examination. That's so... <laughs> that that's so convenient. <laughs> like this game would have been perfect from the prosecution side because that's like the level of unfair that like Ace Attorney games feel for me half the time. I'm like I'm not allowed to say anything right now. Come on. <laughs> yeah, but Van Zeke at least plays by the rules and it doesn't talk. Yeah, I really like Van Zeke. I feel like he's like genuinely like a good prosecutor. Whereas like a lot of the times, I feel like Edgeworth or Von Karma, Edgeworth especially Von good. Karma. Von Karma felt like she was grasping at straws 90% of the time. It, it's okay, though, because she whips you, and then you have to just be like, <laughs> yes, okay. You have to be okay. okay with it. But, like, half the stuff she said, I would be so upset that she said it. But Edgeworth, I'm like, okay, I get it. Like, Edgeworth's okay, but Van Zeke's, I get it. <clears throat> so I honored a deathly sentence, and I listened Silence. to the charade. Silence. Oh, silence. Sorry. I was also going to say charade, but then I would have been like, oh, I must made two mistakes. <clears throat> it seems I overestimated the intelligence of the jury. Mm? Well, no matter. There is nothing so hard to prove as self-evident truth, it would seem. No, 
And why else would we grace the courtroom with our presence after all? So, let us proceed to the next round of battle. Oh. The cloak's is off! It's like a Dragon Ball C, it's like a hundred pound cloak. <laughs> Bring forth the witness one yeah, it's Bring just, forth the witnesses once more. It just drifts across the room, hits Ransuke, Rin, Rinosuke in the face, and he just like and, plummets to the ground. Yeah, like then it becomes a hundred thousand pounds. Like that's that's how it would happen in Ace Attorney. <clears throat> Remember, fair play is gonna be Australian now. Witnesses! I trust you heard the summation examination we just had to endure. Oh, yes, yes, sir. That, that, that did, sir. Of course I did. <laughs> That's Australian. That didn't even sound Australian. Just wait. It'll come out. <laughs> that sounded like African oh, or something. Oh, <laughs> of course <laughs> I heard it. Oh, yes. Uh, sir, I heard it. I heard it. You, sir, on the other hand, the coachman, I believe it's Beppo. Oh, yes, Beppo. sir, my lord, sir. It's so cute. If it transpires that in your previous testimony, you were attempting to veil the presence of a fifth passenger on your omnibus, you will be found guilty of perjury. You advise to bear that in mind, sir. Uh, oh, mio dio. Uh. Oh, mio dio. Uh, now then, witnesses, I hereby call up you to testify before the court again. You will explain the various misgivings brought to our attention by the defense's summation examination. <laughs> I only carried four passengers that night. I swear it, but, um... Well, I for one was told to pay in five pence for the bus. He fiddled us on the fair, he did. And then I saw that blood-curdling sight as well. It's all too much. Oh, I tell ya. I saw McGilded stabbing the man. Everything I said before stands. Plus, okay. I know he at least at one point says crikey, too, so... Crikey! <laughs> crikey! That's the other reason I was like, is he Australian? <laughs> oh, yes, he, he stabbed me at him. He stabbed him. Yes, he did. I, I think so. Yes, sir. He stabbed me. Oh, no. <laughs> Counsel, Counsel, please make sense of this for me, please. The, fa the phantom fifth passenger conjured into existence by my learned eastern friend never existed. The confusion had arisen from the coachman's sly little... Cozenage? Wow, Nursin, you you pause on a word like that. Cozenage? Uh. Cozenage. My phone's dead. I can't look it up. So I'm uh, gonna uh, say cozenage. I can I can look it up. It means trick or deceive. Cozenage. Cozenage. So I was right. Cozenage. <laughs> like I'm like I've never seen that word. Uh, but obviously it comes from con, like a con man, right? Yeah. Maple. Yeah, bro, explain, explain, you explain yourself. Uh, I'm terribly sorry, Guild Master. The Guild's fare is four pence across the board. You know that. I might understand that you've been overcharging our passengers by a penny a fare. It, it's so cold, and the last run of the day is always half empty. You have been dishonest, Coachman. Uh, I'm sorry. You're a disgrace, Beppo, a disgrace. And your selfish action have brought dishonor on the entire guild. Dishonor on you, dishonor on your cow. Dishonor on the entire if, guild. If I may, sir, I had to pay ten pence on the bus just last week. What? Four passengers at five pence each is, yes, twenty pence. I've done a, the arithmetic ten times already. I just can't seem to make the results come out differently. No, that figures. That, that's how math yeah. works. It's not very complex math to begin with, either. <laughs> well, it would appear that one of the aforementioned misgivings have already been explained. So, counsel for the defense, your cross-examination, if you please. 
We've already had the pleasure of a protected summation examination today. I see you intend to continue the parlor games. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I am. I am continuing parlor games. I have to. <laughs> For Cosmo's sake. <laughs> It's, like, what, what? It's, it's what Kazuma wanted, right? right? I'm, I'm not sure what he wanted, but I, th I think he came here to be a parlor trick. <laughs> to, to do parlor tricks in the... To, to be a parlor trick. System. To be a parlor trick. Oh my god, at the end of the game, Rinos takes out his sword and Kazuma pops out. And he's like, Tada! <laughs> it's like he was so, a parlor game this entire time! So there were only four passengers in a carriage, but he didn't charge in the standard four pence fare. Is that right? It's impossible to make the last run of the day, Pepe. Dio is busy in Egypt with a group comprised of French knight, an Egyptian man, and an irritable dog, and Japanese delinquent. His grandfather, please leave a message. <laughs> okay. I, I don't get it, but. It was so cold that all I could do was stop myself from passing out. I'm getting chill blains just listening to you. It was terrible. It, it was terrible. So I had to give myself a pet in the back for even keeping the bus running. D doesn't a d dedicated coachman deserve an extra p penny per p p p p p passenger? You're taking a deeper hurl for yourself here. If only there'd been a fifth passenger in the omnibus that night. Then we would have another suspect. Hold it! Does that mean that everybody on board that night paid five pence to the four? Well, I, well, I paid five pence too, sir. Fair play. Ah, uh, you're muted. I, I, sorry, I forgot. I, I forgot that was me. Sorry. <clears throat> and I, did, and I told you that I, I did that, that. I did. That was the voice I had from originally. There we go. A flat fare, five pence across the board. It's now something to be proud of. The so-called discrepancy my learned friend identified was nothing of the sort. Much like the phantom killer you so desperately needed, it's gone, dead, and buried. I'd have been happy if it had ever existed in the first place. This blood curling say, you mean the murder, I presume? Yes, sir. Lord, I'm sorry. No one should have to witness the horror in the eyes of a man the moment his life is taken. Oh, well, not exactly, sir. I mean, I didn't actually see the exact moment the gent was stabbed. Good gracious, really? We have another witness who did, however. The banker has already testified to it. Hmm, but Mr. First didn't actually see the point at which the victim was killed. That may turn out to be very significant. I heard the banker gent next to me take a sharp intake of breath, see? That's when I looked through the glass. That's when I saw the horrible blade poking out from his belly, all covered in blood. Every time I see a knife now, I can't help screaming, even when I'm eating. I, uh, I think the banker did it. So you saw the defendant, Mr. McGilded, stab the victim, Mr. Mason, who was sitting next to him. That, that's what I said, isn't it? It was bothering me before this was. For just a brief moment, he hesitated before answering the question. Anyway, there were only two of them inside the carriage, wasn't there? There had been much talk of a fifth passenger. But as yet, zero evidence. 
then what are we wasting all this time for, eh? It's black and white. The man's guilty. Yeah, that's a good voice. That's a good voice. <laughs> Something about Mr. Fairplay's testimony just jars with me. I wish I could work out what it was. Might be that his voice has changed so many times. Don't, don't, don't talk about me like that. Earlier you testified that you saw the moment when the defendant allegedly stabbed the victim, didn't you? Oh yes, yes, that's right. You said that the victim was on the floor and described the assailant holding the knife in an ice pick grip. I, I suppose I might have, you know, yes, put the cart before the horse, maybe. What's this? Well, I'm quite sure about most of it. I was driving the horse when I heard a scream from among the seats of my roof deck. Oh, I expect that was me, sir. Then when I turned around, yes, I saw it to the skylight. The gentleman on the floor and the knife was sticking out of his midriff. Oh, midriff. Th that's right, yes. And the fellow was holding the handle with the famous man, yes. So in short, you didn't see the moment when the victim was actually stabbed at all. I really thought I did, but... But when I could go over it in my head... No, I suppose I didn't actually see the price moment of the stabbing, did I? Well, uh. someone <laughs> can really wants to chew on a stick. Oops. Okay. Oh, uh, we pursue now. I thought we were still cross-examining. You pursue while cross-examining. I forgot how that works. It's been so long. Hey, yeah. Do you have something to say about that, Mr. Fabley? No, you listen to me. I know what you're thinking. He didn't really see the exact moment the fellow was stabbed. What are the chances of that? Eh? Are you asking me or telling me? He's getting flustered. I might be able to extract some new information from him if I ask, answer him cleverly. Could he have just happened to see the exact moment the crime, crime was committed? <laughs> <laughs> some, some days I like that. <laughs> no chance. <laughs> I just like, some days I like that. <laughs> well, this is a little hard to believe, certainly. <laughs> it's a very interesting way they could make that answer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's something I would say. Some days I like that. <laughs> Unless you spend your time peeping through a skylight on top of the omnibus, that is. Hey, big. I'm, I'm, I'm a respectable banker, I'll have you know. And I know what I saw. I remember it as clear as a Ballarat day. It was a grim scene, I don't mind telling you. Thank you, Mr. Fairplay. Oh, excuse me if I was getting a little hot under the collar there, my lord. I want to ask you to su supplement your testimony with a clear statement of what exactly you saw. Oh, I could do that, all right. I'll tell you how, just how grim it was. Uh, do you think I'd forget the sight of the blood-soaked hands after that butcher stabbed a man? Uh, right. Present. Present? The gloves. Because well, it's only one glove that's bloody, Oops. not both. <laughs> I've learned so much over these last years playing Bl this game. Blood-soaked hands? Well, I admit that soap might be learning on a little thick, but... But anyway, there was definitely blood all over them. Both of them were covered in it. <laughs> well, I'm very sorry to disagree, Mr. Fairplay, but that's more than a little peculiar. What? Here are the gloves worn by the defendant, Mr. McGilded, on the night in question. Yes, right. And there certainly does appear to be a sizable dark-coloured stain there. But as I'm sure you can clearly see, it's only in the right hand glove. <laughs> in short, Mr. Fairplay, your testimony is inconsistent. Yeah. But, but, no, that can't be right. So you're the liar here then. That's right. You were quite clear about it. You said, 
It was both hands. Mr. Fairplay, if your last testimony was a lie, it calls your entire testimony into question. You say you saw the moment the victim was stabbed, but is that really the truth? Yeah, I, well, I, I, Objection. It was a simple mistake. You can't justify accusing this man of lying. Yes, it wasn't both hands, it was only one, but the fact remains. The victim's blood was on the accused. Objection. No, Mr. Fairplay categorically stated that he saw blood all over both hands, which means there's a strong possibility this witness is deliberately trying to mislead the court. Ah! Why, why, I'm a city banker for pity's sake. My word should be the gold standard. I'm a gentleman, not some gutter snipe. Upstanding members, members of society don't prevaricate. Prevaricate. He's claiming, learning new words. <laughs> he's claiming to have no his to lie. <laughs> but is that really the case? Mr. Naruto, if you had some evidence to explain why Mr. Fairplay might be lying, it could turn the tide of this trial completely. Some, something to show, something to show this, this man, man has a compelling reason to lie in his testimony. To lie. There is evidence, and I have it. There is evidence, and I have it. My lord. It. Yes, counsel. The defense yeah, is ready yeah, to present yeah, evidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By Jove, are you sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, evidence that will clearly demonstrate why Mr. Fairplay had reason to lie in his testimony. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very well. I hereby call upon the defense to present his evidence. Present the ledger. The evidence that presents demonstrates a motive for the witness is the ledger deception of the court. Present the ledger. He wants him dead. This is the list of the debtors who owe money to Mr. McGilded. Yes, a list of innocent victims crippled by the accused's extortion. The point is, knowing the names of these debtors is your name. Mr. Bruce Fairplay. What? Mr. Fairplay, are you currently indebted financially to the accused? Ah, uh, no, well, it's, it's barely worth being called a debt. According to this ledger, you owe 20 guineas. Not an inconsiderable sum of money, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Well, well, what of it? Let's suppose Mr. McGilded were to be found guilty of murder. What would become of your de debt in that case? These documents state that the loan agreement is forged between two individual parties. Therefore, were the creditor, the defendant here, to be sentenced to capital punishment, all outstanding debts which were owed to him would be annulled. They would cease to exist. Cease to exist? Mr. Fairplay. It is, n is it not the case that you claimed in your testimony to have seen something you never in fact saw, in a devious attempt to annul your debt of 20 guineas to the defendant? Order, order, order! Mr. Brufarple. Yes, my lord? <laughs> Let me ask you again. And be aware that your answer may have the most serious implications upon your future, sir. Did you or did you not see the precise moment in time at which the defendant's alleged death thrust a knife into the victim? Your silence speaks volumes. You did not tell the truth in your testimony. All right, now let's not make a melodrama out of this. Perhaps I did overstate the truth a pinch. A pinch? But it makes no difference. I definitely remember seeing blood on Mr. McGilda's hands, both of them. And yet, only one of the defendant's gloves, which we have here as evidence, is stained. Uh, you keep saying. I, I wonder if I may be allowed to speak, sir. Go ahead, Mr. First. Well, the thing is, I think I remember seeing it myself, as it happens. Seeing what? 
the blood, sir, on the assailant's hands. I think, yes. I'm, I'm almost sure that it was on both of his hands, not just one. What? What? It would appear that we're going to need further testimony from all of you witnesses. This time, I would like to know precisely what you did and what you did not see. Do I make myself perfectly clear? Yes. Mr. Narado, this is good news. The court of the courts at this trial seems to have shifted slightly at last. Yes. I might finally have a chance to turn things around here. There was blood on both of the hands of the assailant. I sincerely and distinctly remember that. However, I, I suppose you might say that I didn't see the exact moment that the stabbing transpired, if that matters. I remember seeing the knife, and, and I remember seeing both of the attacker's hands with blood on them. I didn't actually see a thing myself. No, n not until I heard the scream. Anyway, the fact remains, there can't have been anyone else in that carriage, or we would have all been seen it. We would have all seen this. Well, lo and behold. In truth, in fact, not one of you is witness to the crucial moment the crime was perpetrated. I, I apologize, my lord, but, but honestly, uh, there was no one else inside that carriage, and the man's hands were covered in blood. Uh, that much incriminating evidence is tantamount to saying we saw the man do it. That's really not what testimony is about. Let us examine the interior of the omnibus once more. The victim's fresh blood is clearly visible on the seat, corroborating the witness's accounts. In other words, there is no substantial, no significant change in the facts of the case. Hmm. Very well. Your cross-examination, please, counsel. Yes, my lord. You probably can, like, get through this one cross-examination just save there. That sound good? Yeah, yeah. It was remember what I saw. No, the evidence tells us otherwise. We have the gloves the defendant was wearing on the night to question the court record. I'm well aware of that, sir, but nonetheless. I know what I saw, and I stand by it. The man had blood on both his hands. He's defiant even in the face of hard evidence. He's steadfastly refusing to admit that he may be mistaken about what he saw, but why? Your reasoning is dire. One hand or two, the salient point remains unchanged. Minutes after the grim scene, the victim's blood dripped guiltily from the accused's fingers. Hmm. Don't try to downplay this. Whether or not you saw the exact moment of the crime is a matter of fundamental importance as well, you know? Yeah, but for crying out loud, we all know that no one else could have possibly have done it. It was just uh, trying to save us all some time. You have a loan of 20 guineas outstanding with the defendant, do you not? <sighs> Had you hoped to release her from the financial burden by ensuring the defendant was found guilty? I, well, uh, that's not entirely not what I was hoping for. Uh, I, I just lost a little guinea or ten when I backed the wrong horse at the derby. Just, oh, uh, I was going to win it all back. There's a fixture this weekend and I'm sure of a thing. <sighs> a little guinea or ten. I'm a banker. No one bets an eye if I borrow a little spending money for the weekend. I think you may have revealed rather more about your character than you bargained for, sir. This witness's scribbles are not on trial here. Yeah, they just like 
admit to like rigging horse races proceed to the next witness i don't think so i think he's just taking out money for horse races and he's just like i'm sure this one will win okay because when is, i heard fixture i'm like it's fixing it is that really how it's supposed to work the, the maybe is fixing it, i don't know You definitely saw that too. Blood on both hands. Rapper confirmed. Yes, sir. I mean, I, I know what you're going to say. Only one of my, my gilded gloves are there any signs of blood on it. That's right. The thing is, as far as I remember, sir, when I looked down and saw Mr. McGilded sitting beside the other fellow, I don't believe he was wearing any gloves, sir. He wasn't wearing these gloves. That's correct, sir. And I saw the blood on both his bare qu hands quite clearly. It's true that the dark cartilage stain on the dark leather gloves wouldn't have been easy to see. I should point out that the police officer who apprehended the accused on the night in question reported that there was no trace of blood on Mr. McGilda's gloved hands. There wasn't any blood on his hands. This is puzzling indeed. It must be sig significant somehow, I'm sure of it. <laughs> You didn't see anything? Oh yes sir, that, that, say no sir, I, I didn't. Very sorry but what I said before sir, I'm very sorry, yes. It was very wrong of me to make up stories and say I um, stabbed the man. Wouldn't you agree sir? I know what you're insinuating, but I certainly wasn't making up stories. Still, to say you saw nothing isn't right either, is it? No, sir, I saw nothing at all. Mr. Beppo, you are driving your horses. At the very least, you, um, you must have enjoyed a good view of London streets, no? <laughs> oh, please, you didn't even see that. It was so cold that night to see. It was all I could do to keep from passing out, sir. Yes, my head was fairly frozen solid, sorry to say, sir. It would seem prudent to avoid travel on the last omnibus service of London's cold winter nights. Beppo! Hi! Oh, I love you, Beppo. In a way, the fact remains, it cannot be anyone who should have heard of you without seeing it. And everything you saw of the incident was through the skylight on the roof of the omnibus. Mm -hmm, that's right. He was very fiercely cold that night, but the glass wasn't frosted over. Oh yes, I remember I was shivering. It was so bitter. Which rather begs, which rather begs the question of why did the pair of you were sitting on the roof in the deck in the first place? Well, I don't know about this young fella, but I couldn't enter the cabin. Oh, why not? It was locked from the inside. Tried dock it, but no one opened the door. It was locked. That's right. And it was a public bus service, for pity's sake. That's how it's what I call fair play. Yes, I had exactly the same experience. I tried knocking, but the gent inside just gestured at me to clear off. So I had no choice but to climb to the roof deck and look down longingly into the warm cabin below. Well, I can assure you that I wasn't just looking down, I was glaring long and hard. <laughs> and that's precisely why I can tell you with absolute confidence that if there was anyone else that had that cabin at all, I would have noticed. Unequivocal, I would say. I'm not sure about these two witnesses. Could they really have seen everything inside the cabin through the skylight? No. Allow me to confirm one thing, Mr. Fairplay. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm looking for a hot spot to stop. You are riding the omnibus. And witnessed the events in the cabin through the skylight in the floor of the upper deck. Is that right? That's right. Yes. In that case... There's a portion of the cabin interior that would have been out of sight from you. What? Hey, Kali, really? Obviously, at this stage, you can't say for cer sure. But the possibility cannot be denied. Are at we... the time of the incident, 
There could have been another passenger in the enclosed cabin of the omnibus. There could have been. Uh, are we that far away from uh, to be continued spot? Uh, I don't want to promise that it would be within the next fifteen minutes. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. It's hard to tell based off the guides. We don't have any more cross examinations, but like, like this is it. Like this would just be text, and then to be continued. No, there'll be there'll be questions and stuff to answer. Mm. Evidence to present stuff like that still. So that's why I'm just I don't know. Is this a good spot? There could have been another passenger in the closed cabin. Um, or maybe we maybe. should present where and then. Yeah. Objection. Just so I don't forget my train of thought. <laughs> enough, I, <clears throat> enough hypothetical meandering, my Nipponese friend. The prosecution demands that you substantiate your claims. After all, the scene of the crime is here, in the flesh. Actually, the, we're, we're approaching a, a good spot, that would be. Very well, I will uphold the prosecution's demand. You will identify the area, the cross-sectional plan of the omnibus. Uh, We're exactly in the omnibus. Are you suggesting that the potential extra passenger could have been situated? Like, really, we're going to eventually have to point out that they were hiding underneath, like, where the storage area is. But for now, we're pointing, I guess, directly below that chair. Right here? Yeah. No, that, that sitting there, yeah. But, like, really, it's going to, eventually, it's going to be underneath it. Both, row, it. both rows of the seats in the fa roof face in the direction of travel. Whereas the seats in the enclosed cabin face each other. Uh, Easter egg, Professor means... Layton. What? Oh. Uh, Easter egg for Professor Layton. They're all Layton. Every bond. <laughs> Oops, it's all, all It's all Layton all the way down. Oh, no. <laughs> it's all Layton? It always has been. <laughs> all the way down. The visible part of the cabin, which passengers in the roof deck can see through the skylight. Let's just finish the train of thought so you're not confused when we get back. Yeah. It says I've drawn here. Oh. <gasps> That's right, my lord. As you can see, the seat opposite the one on which the victim and his attacker were sitting is obscured from view. In other words, if someone else had been sitting on that side of the seat, it's quite possible these witnesses would have been completely unaware of it. Yeah. Objection. It is quite possible some phantom was sitting there. You Nipponese have a foreboding habit of obscuring the truth with ambiguity. Hmm. That's a racist. I concur with the prosecution's rejoinder. In a British court of law, evidence is paramount. I cannot entertain this conjecture in counsel. That is, unless you're able to put a name to this mysterious passenger to whom you allude. Put a name? Can't you, Mr. Naruto? Honestly, don't know. Who could it have been? Who could have been in the other seat, which was out of sight from the witnesses on the roof deck? I, I have an inkling, I guess. Do we have an inkling? Understand, my lord. The defense would like to put forward a name. You are a fool. A foolish fool that foolishly foolish things. That's responsible for a desperate attempt by a man who has no notion of his own limitations. A toast to hard lessons not yet learned. There is not delay, Count, so the defense is still to name the passenger in the other seat. Stop, stop. A after we name it, we'll save. This could be it. This could be a chance I've been waiting for to turn the trial in my favor. Ba -ba 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 -ba. On the night in question, on the night of the murder, the person occupying the seat in the omnibus cabin that was obscured from view was... Just in case. Was it really? What? Was it Mel Strongheart? Why would you think Mel Strongheart? Because of the M? Like... And the knife? That's so. That'd be such a weird twist. Okay, so would, like... let let me help you work through the logic. So uh, we're saying that they 
what they saw ha they saw the crime happen. Oh, oh, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. The person that was obscured was McGilded. Because the, the killer was sitting next to the person, but McGilded is not the killer. That's that's what they want us to think, right? We'll try it. That's what they want us to think. Like, I'm like, that'd be such a weird stretch. The passenger in the enclosed cabin of the witnesses in the roof failed to see. Has to have been Mr. Magnus McGilded. Very clever. Mr. McGilded. What are you talking about, Counsel? That's the name of the defendant. Okay, okay. See, Tax, so I can... <laughs> That's flammable wine? Dang, what kind of proof are you drinking, Van Zeeks? <laughs> wow. This guy's metal. Do you want me to read this? Read this and then we'll save. If I desecrate this chamber by smashing my hollowed chalice, do forgive the discourtesy. 